Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. We're going to look at how we can find the inverse of a permutation. It's rather in cycle notation. So let's suppose I have something like one, two, three. Now this one should be fairly simple. Right now, one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one. We just invert those assignments. So instead of one going to two, two will go to one. Instead of two going to three, three goes to two. Um, and instead of three going to instead of three going to one, one will go to three. It's just be backwards. If we just write it backwards, we're good. So we could say the inverse of this permutation is this one. Um, well, another way of thinking about that is you could have actually just kept the one in, in fact, if you just did a rotation of this, kind of moving this one to the front, notice that you just have one, um, one, three, two, and this is actually the same thing. One goes to three, one goes to three, two goes to one, two goes to one, and three goes to two. You could have just kept the one in place and then just inverted the order of the, of the rest, and that actually also works as well. So these two things are equivalent. Now, how would you find the inverse permutation if you have um, a cycle notation of, um, that's not disjoint or even disjoint? Um, let's do an example where we'd have um, two cycles that are composed together that are not disjoint. The process is the, um, should be the same if they are disjoint, but this emphasizes it a little bit better. So let's do one, two, three, and then let's put on, again, I don't have to write the composition symbol, but I could if I wanted to but I un understand it's there. First evaluate it's on the right, then move to the left, thinking of these as functions. So then let's do one, two. How would I find the inverse? Well, um, what we could do is we could think, we want to compose this with something over here such that it's gonna cancel out. Well, why don't we just do one, two, three with an inverse here? And then after those cancel out, then we'll be left over here and we say one, two inverse. So notice that this would work. If I invert the order of these functions and then invert them respectively, I would get the inverse. So the inverse is, one, two inverse, and one, two, three inverse. I just need to invert these. Now notice using this trick over here, I could think of the inverse of this as one, three, two. I could think of the inverse of this, well, just switch the order, two, one, but two, one, and one, two, it's its own inverse. If you switch one and two, and then switch them again, you've done nothing. So they're inverses of each other as functions. So you can think of this as just being one, two. So the inverse of this is simply this. Now, you could write this in disjoint cycle notation and this one as well. And you'll notice, well, let's go through it. Let's see, we have one. So one goes to two, if you put one in here, one goes to two two goes to three, so the output is three from one. Three goes in here, fixes here, here it goes to one, so back. So it's just one, three. Now two, two goes into here, it goes to one, goes in here, goes to two. So overall two is fixed, so this is the result. Now if you do this, we should get the inverse of one, three, which happens to be one, three, as we just discussed for one, two here, because this is a two cycle itself. Well, let's see. If we put one in here, it takes us to three. Okay. And then I'm done because the other one fixes three. Three comes in, and it goes to two, and two goes to one. So back wraps around to one. Now, since it's a permutation and you only have one thing left, I mean, two is only one place to go itself, but you could try it. Two goes to one, and one goes to two. So two goes to itself, it's fixed. So this is the result as expected. Now, 
if we had disjoint cycles, such as one, five, and two, three, say, um, and we want to find the inverse, first notice something. Does it matter which order I put the two, three, or the one, five? Two, three fixes five, and it fixes one. One, five fixes two, and it fixes three. Fixing, meaning as something comes in, it does, this function does nothing to it. You can check, but these actually commute. I could put two, three, and one, five first, and this would be the same. The only reason why they're the same is because they're disjoint. Since they're disjoint, they commute. If they were not disjoint, they actually, in general, don't. So for this, in this particular, but in this particular case, these are equal. So really inverting some things that are disjoint, um, normally you would rewrite this as we did before by inverting the orders. But notice that you can do the same thing here. Um, and if you invert them, you'd have one five inverse and two three. So really, when they're disjoint, the inverting of the order is not important. It's only important when they're not disjoint, as up here. Thanks for watching.